Hello. All right. Wait, hang on. No. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I've just clicked live on Facebook. Yep. <laughs> we'll have to trim this bit. Uh, me Zoom meeting description. Share on your timeline public. I don't know how I can tag you. All right, I'm pressing go live, and then we might have to come on over. I'll see if I can tag you. All right, we should be good in. Says preparing. <laughs> it tells me. Hi everyone. Uh, my name's Rochelle. I am the non no. Oh, gee, I don't even know my own name. I am the no nonsense naturopath, and I am here with the glorious Emma Martin, who is the lazy keto mum and. She, we are going to share some random thoughts to you with you today about uh, the silly season. I probably shouldn't call it that, but the, the festive season. Uh, any New Year's resolutions you might have pertaining to your health and any other random thoughts. So if there's anything that you'd like to ask us, you can comment below, hopefully. Okay, so I will hand you over to Emma and she's going to have a chat to you about her thoughts on the lovely food pyramid that we've all had ingrained into us for the last 60 years. And let's get going. Cool. I'm just tagging you, Rochelle, on Facebook. Excellent. So cool. That should come up while I'm nattering. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I, I love listening to Rochelle and I love talking to this lady because she makes it make so much sense. You know, we've been following this crazy food pyramid for, I don't know, 60 or 70 years now. And when I say crazy food pyramid, um, what they told us doesn't work. It, what they told us is, is not working for the bulk of the human population. And by making a few changes and flipping the food pyramid upside down, we've seen so many people regain their health, their clarity of thought get their mood up and happening and so you know it's just silly little things like minimizing sugar which might seem like a mad thing to do this time of year but I guarantee you like most people put on seven kilos this time of year and so if you can I mean if you're going to go hell for leather be my guest but there are ways of getting around that so the food pyramid was introduced in 19 I don't know 60 something and it wasn't even based on real science and it went right hand in hand with the eat less, move more. Now you'll see my cheeks slightly flushed and healthfully glowing <laughs> because I've been out for a run. Well, it's not really a run, actually. <laughs> I literally wore, I have, I have like a 20 minute playlist of amazing songs and I run for a couple of steps, jog, um, and I walk. And the, I walk to happy songs, but the bulk of my fat loss came before I did any exercise. So, you know, I wanted to challenge you guys, if you're listening, um, eat less, move more wasn't based on real science. And it's all about hormones, isn't it, Rochelle? Like, what have you got to say around that? Absolutely. Uh, look, I mean, no one's going to dispute that ex exercise is beneficial if it doesn't cause your body stress. Um, as far as the eating less, the problem with, I mean, particularly when with res uh, restrictive diets that you see, um, you know, how's it working for you? The whole of society is now obese with cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. And largely, I mean, I've got to say the reason for that is we're not getting enough um, essential fatty acids or good fats in our diet. And see what happens there is that your body sees that you are under, under famine conditions, really, you're not, your body's not getting what it needs. So it clamps down onto everything. So not only are you eating less and your body's holding on to what it's got, and it's not going to give up that fat stored body fat at all uh, you're starving and so when you're starving you tend to make really bad choices so then you go for the carbs which starts this whole cycle of body fat production with high insulin and high glucose so we've got to ask ourselves I mean people come to me and say but the food pyramids I mean that's what it is and I'm going well how's it working for you and basically you know that's the thing yeah and I think you're right. I think because it, you know, it came from our grandmas and our mums and our families and it came from the government, yes. the food pyramid. And, you know, crazily enough, it's based on seven countries out of 26 or 27 countries. Like those countries were cherry picked. And again, like, how's it work for you? And what you're saying about carbs and insulin is really interesting because before this journey, I didn't understand the um, relationship. So when I ate 
sugar and carbs and I didn't I mean carbs obviously they're not the devil we're not saying that but carbs and sugar they cause an insulin response don't they they do indeed and where that becomes particularly important is when there's an excess of you know high insulin and unused carbohydrates I mean the concept of having carbohydrates in your body and the insulin allows it to get into the cell is to utilize that energy but if we're not utilizing the energy and let's face it we're all sitting behind computers seven hours a day if you've got an office job and things like that then it's going to be stored as body fat but if you're not eating essential fatty acids your body still thinks you're starving same with protein doesn't seem to have the same it doesn't the body doesn't worry about and doesn't go into that preservation state if you limit your carbs though isn't that interesting it will if you limit protein will if you limit fats but it doesn't seem to when you limit carbs and that's because it's got a default mechanism for burning fats as energy so it doesn't actually worry too much it's kind of got that famine protection mechanism with respect to carbohydrates so if you're not eating enough protein and fats then you can do whatever you want you're not going to successfully lose that body fat yeah i think about it you know really we're survivors like our bodies are designed to live so that we could procreate the human race like i mean that's our function right to breed to multiply and our body wants to survive so okay if coming up to this new year let's say i'm going to blunder my way through Christmas with donuts and cocktails and Christmas pudding and whatever and I do the whole okay I'm gonna do it in the new year like what tips have you got because I I I think often people set um you know new year's resolutions it happens in one day where we're feeling sick fat and tired like what I know you've got tips around that because you shared them with me do you want to share them with these guys yeah, absolutely. Number one, don't give yourself a hard time. Christmas is a festive season or whatever religious celebration you might have or just, you know, New Year's. Um, don't give yourself a hard time about enjoying yourself. The key to being healthy is not deprivation. Deprivation isn't sustainable. Um, so the pre-Christmas tip that I have is to, you know, if you've got a glorious banquet of food, Fill yourself up on the yummy meats and, and vegetables and all of that sort of thing first so that when you go for the dessert, which is perfectly fine, number one, you'll be slowing that burning down because you've already got some fats and proteins to help slow that down. But you'll also um, not be drawn to, you can have your piece of plum pudding, but you're not going to be drawn to having five or six because you're already full. So that's one key. Uh, secondly, if you're making New Year's resolutions regarding your health, think really clearly about your goals and ask for help. We all have hairdressers and we have beauticians and we have personal trainers and personal training, you know, is a good health tip too. But why not a health, you know, someone that can actually guide you and support you through your health journey? Now, I'd just like to say with respect to exercise, if your body is entirely under stress, which I mean, this year's led to that, uh, and you're nutrient deficient and all that sort of thing, strenuous exercise is actually only going to put your body into more of a protective mechanism because it's not ready for it. You've got, the, got to get the basic foundations of what your body needs. I sound like I'm on a soapbox. Um, foundations of what your <laughs> body needs to get right before exercise is going to work. Now, that doesn't mean stop everything, but it means be smart. Um, and reach out for help if you need it. Yeah, I think you, you know, you hit it on the head. I think the guilt is of, of you know, oh, I'm going to do all this exercise because that's what we've been told works, right? But you and I know that it's about hormones. So if you have cortisol coming in where you've got a guilt cycle, your body goes into that fear, um, those three Fs, you know, how you fight fear um, or flight or famine. So your body starts to go through chemical changes with your hormones and you can actually force your body into storage where you're actually trying to do the other thing Absolutely. if you go through that guilt cycle of i oh, should have would have could have like and i think you know my top tip around exercise is you know don't do it to lose weight do it because it makes you feel good do it because the um neurons get cleaned up when you're walking or you know I, was, I want to say ice skating I don't know why it's like 40 degrees here today. I know I'd like some ice at the minute and don't forget to breathe there's a lot to that as well tell us more about that look 
taking stock and just relaxing and breathing, and you can certainly do that on a fast paced walk too, uh, with your favorite podcast, um, really reduces cortisol. And cortisol, oh, oh, look, it's a whole hour webinar in itself. And I'll do one. If you click the yes box or the heart box or any of them really, um, I will provide you with a whole hour webinar on how this works. But um, reducing cortisol really has an effect on stabilizing a lot of hormones. Uh, if your body is under stress, your thyroid will really struggle to make energy that it needs. And we know that you're under stress, you don't feel like getting up and going and achieving things. It also interrupts your sleep and sleep is hugely important for everything. And as you can imagine, it's a vicious cycle. When one starts going wrong, they all do. So the best thing, I mean, your adrenal health is the one, one of the two endocrine organs that we actually have great control, you know, more control over. So if you can manage to limit your stress and limit the need for cortisol, you'll be helping your whole body system. Uh, the other one, of course, is the pancreas and we can completely control what we put in our mouth, but I'll just leave that there for you. <laughs> yeah, I think when you are insulin resistant, in other words, you know, your cells aren't getting fed properly after having, you know, X amount of donuts you know over however many years and you know your your body isn't unlocking the energy I think willpower goes out the window and I, I don't I didn't understand how all that worked um we might actually do that we might do a little bit more on that next time guys but don't sweat the small stuff is what I'm hearing like enjoy yourself but don't beat yourselves up if you make a mistake or you slip up we would love to know if you're watching the Facebook live we would love to know in the comments what you would actually love us to talk about and teach you on. If you're re-listening to this as a recording, you can comment replay. And if you're listening to this on our podcast, we'd love you to reach out to us and let us know what you'd like to learn about. Uh, we're going to do more of these as we come up. Rochelle also does coaching. I do food coaching and we work together. So if that's something you're interested in the new year, reach out to us. We love, like we're helpers. Um, have you got anything to add to that, Rochelle? Just, uh, just for people, if they want to keep in touch with me, if they're followers of Emma, uh, you can get me at Rochelle Weight Expert Naturopath uh, on Facebook uh, or probably Instagram as well. And um, if you follow me, then I will put down links to, um, you know, group package deals or special offers or special coaching sessions or whatever happens to be going on over the new years. And there's going to be heaps in 2022. We have plans. Well, I know your customers just love you and they think you are amazing because I've been privileged enough to work with some of them as well. So congratulations on what you're doing. I think it's so important that people learn about this. Um, and I just think that what we've been told you guys just take it with a grain of salt because there are so many people. Like if you look at people following this lifestyle, like Rochelle and I, people have a glow. Hmm. They have a glow. You can tell. So Absolutely. we should talk about the glow and how to use backwards. Oh, there's so much to talk about. And I have to say, oh. it's amazing because not only do I get to educate people and they, you know, feel more content in themselves and less stressed, but then they get healthier and have more energy and they come bounding up my stairs into my room. Whereas that was a really, you know, hard thing when they first started coming. So yay. Yay. It's super and exciting. hi to all my existing clients. Well, we'll tag everybody in the comments. Um, we'll tag Rochelle so you can find her business page. We'll tag mine and you guys can reach out to, out to us anytime. Anything Great. to add, Rochelle? No. All good. Have an amazing weekend because it's Friday. Friday! All right. Thanks for your time. And right. um, we'd love to hear from you guys. Okay. I think that it's... Oh, hold on. Let me stop the recording. <laughs>